gentlemen, my name is Day9, and welcome back to Spell Slingers, the show where I play Magic the Gathering with my nerd friends. And today's said friend is none other than Ari Stidham. Ari, how are you doing this fine day? I'm doing so great. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to play some magic. Hi, I'm, I'm Ari Stidham. You might know me from Scorpion on CBS or some of the musicals I've made. One's called Solo Must Die here in Los Angeles. Now, Ari, what's your history and experience with magic? Well, I have a lot of friends who have played magic. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't call myself a full-blown novice. I know a good deal about <laughs> a magic. A full-blown novice. I wouldn't be a full-blown novice. A doctor wouldn't diagnose you <laughs> no. with an acute case of being a novice. A lot of my friends play magic, but every time I've tried to learn or sat down with them, they always beat me pretty pretty bad. So one of the things that's really cool is that this is actually the 25th anniversary of magic, so we're actually going back to Dominaria, which you can actually see in the globe back there that was originally made for the Dominaria set. So it all comes full it's circle. It's full circle. It's which coming back. All this speaking of circular objects, watch the master of Segway at work. <gasps> Check this out. The wheel of destiny and fate placed actually a little bit inconveniently far away from you. Do I spin first? Is that, do I gotta go, should I do it? You know, of course. I'm the host, you're the guest. Okay. We need a full rotation on the wheel. Okay, I'm gonna uh, do it. <laughs> a full rotation, okay, all right. That was maybe not the full rotation we hoped Should for. Should I do it again? No. I got red green. It was a very smooth spin. I feel good about myself. You're gonna be playing with the Chandra deck. Chandra. And now, the real question is, what am I going to play? I don't know if you know this. I have an aversion to blue. Counterspell, card draw, counterspell. Sure draw cards, counterspell. Look, I'm gonna scry. I hate blue. You probably wanna play blue now. <laughs> you. Time for me to avoid white blue. So we're playing, we're playing blue-white. That's pretty cool. So I don't know if you've seen Real Magic in action. I have seen the show, I'm very excited. Okay, do you have your pose ready? I do. All right, ready, set, summon the deck! <laughs> so now, now typically what we would do is we would look in the decks and sort of see what's there, mm -hmm. but I always like to not look. I always like the element of surprise. Feel free to look through your... Sorry, you set me up for it. Did you get that startled reaction? Because that actually, <laughs> you, you frightened me. I surprised you. Well, what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna shuffle up. Great. You can shuffle. Ah. Ari's a complete goofball. He's the perfect human to begin the day against. And now, let's roll to see who goes first. Ready? Come on. And... Two, a three, three and a two, we're awful, dude. Yeah. But I'm marginally less <laughs> awful. So I'd like to congratulate myself, and I think I'll go, I think I'm gonna go first. And before we draw, Ari, let's play some magic. Regal. This is a man who knows he's here to play a game and have fun. He's such a gentleman. I'm willing to curtsy for that kind of man. Somebody ever extends their hand to you. If you, wanna, if you wanna get in their head a little bit, give them one of these. Oh, you don't, you, do you not make eye contact with me? Is that how you alpha male curtsy me? I don't know what to think of him not looking at me, but I think that's alpha as f Let's draw out our seven cards. Okay, not good so far, not good so far. In Magic the Gathering, you're supposed to go for three-ish lands in the starting hand, three or four? Keep it. I should, I should chuck this back. <laughs> if you get two lands, look at me, okay? Mulligan, mulligan. I know it's the right thing to do. I, sh I should mulligan this. Never keep a two lander, just don't. Especially in a slower format like Dominaria. I'm gonna keep it, I'm gonna keep this. I'm gonna keep. <laughs> And I know, I know this hurts you. I know this hurts you. This is gonna help you, but I know you are upset by this. But I'm gonna keep this. I feel real confident in my ability to draw exactly what I need to. Are you gonna keep your hand? Yes. Ari. Good luck, sir. Oh my god, it's happening again. What? I looked you in the eyes that time. I know. That's because you respect me. <laughs> All right. Then let's see how good my RNG is. I'm going to begin by symbolically playing an island, and I know I have power over this deck, and I'll get exactly what I need. Turn to you. Draw, and uh, I will play a forest. 
I will also play Land of War Elves. I put a creature out, it's a turn one creature. I'm feeling great, I'm feeling pretty confident. I'm not cocky yet, but I could get there if things keep on going good. Can I go, can I go, can I go, can I go, can I go? On to you. I'm going to play the planes. I'm gonna tap them both to play the Relic Runner. It is a two one that says Relic Runner can't be blocked if you've cast a historic spell this turn. Historic is one of the new keywords in Dominaria, which is there are certain cards that are historic, artifacts, legendaries, saga cards. So if I play one of those, can't block it this turn. Is that it? I mean, it's your turn. I'll definitely play another forest. Bang it right on down. I'll do this one. What's this? Uh, this is the Elfham Druid. All right, so you have like a million ways to gain mana. I really should <laughs> never keep a two land hand. I'm never gonna learn this. Is that it? I should go like this. All it's right. all through. Finn. Your turn. My God, I'm, I'm never gonna be punished. Never. <laughs> I'm never gonna be punished. This was a good decision. Everyone online knows it. I know it. You know it. I'm going to cast Divination. Divination just says pay three mana and draw two cards. So I'm gonna do this and I'm never gonna be punished. This is, this is extraordinary. Okay. Your turn. Wait, no, excuse me. <laughs> A whole new world. <laughs> it's your turn, go Ari. Thank you so do much. Do it. Another land. The army of forests and the elves that can give you all the green mana you so desire. Okay. All right. Ready? I don't know if you All realize right. what you've walked into, Mr. Nine. Just do it. All right. Great. I'm gonna play the Gilded Lotus. Oh, you would. Ari's ramping to infinity and I only have a Relic Runner. I played the Gilded Lotus. I got eight mana. He's only got three. I'm feeling great. Oh, come on. And immediately bringing out Marwin the Nurturer, 1-1. One, one. I'm here to get you, man. I'm gonna come after you. Either he magically summons something that ends the game next turn or he has nothing in his hand and he's ramped kind of off a cliff to nothing. What will it be? And my turn is over. I don't know any of the music from Up, but that's the one I would have sung. All right. I have made my decision. And? All right, we're gonna play Juggernaut. It's a four mana, five, three. It's a good old artifact. With all the elves that Ari has down, they've already helped Ari get to the point where he has a ton of mana. So I expect Ari to just block one at a time, slowly let those elves die, which I don't think will hurt him at all. And it'll take me a while before this Juggernaut can start dealing some real damage. So first of all, because it's an artifact, it triggers the historic ability on a Relic Runner. And therefore, I attack with this and you can't block it. Take two damage, go to 18. Put it down. Oh! All right, it's your turn. Draw. Uh, I'm gonna play a mountain. Very well. How, ma how many do I need? Six? Oh, no, how many do you need? What? Okay, okay, Mr. Ramp and Man. And the Gilded Lotus. Okay. Chandra, bold pyromancer. Of course. I just played Chandra. My whole deck is built around this planeswalker. Okay, so Ari does have a huge threat that he was able to ramp to. This is what you've done to me. But this isn't like some green 10-10 that can begin immediately attacking me. Chandra needs to get to her minus seven ultimate ability. If she gets there, then Ari's just gonna kill all of my stuff and then I'll have no creatures, no hope, no future. It's over for me. How are you gonna hurt me? <laughs> Can you what, what's the harm you wish to impose upon me? I'm going to do the plus one for Chandra. I'm choosing to use Chandra's plus one ability so I can get her to seven loyalty points, which will do 10 damage to all of Sean's creatures and anything he wants to play. I'm sort of on fire a little bit. All right, and uh, to six. which target player did you want to deal that damage to? <laughs> Who is it? You, me? You. So I think mm. you take two. Very well. Look at that, we're little twinsies, and I just got a bunch of mana. That is the end of my turn, man. I think I'm in a good spot. I'm in the power position, I have the high ground. Feeling good. So first of all, here's what's gonna happen. Combat's gonna begin, and this uh, Juggernaut has to attack each combat if able. So I'm going to attack Chandra. I'm swinging in for five. What's up? I'm not mean to you. I know, I know. It's, it's born out of insecurity. <laughs> it's fine. The Llanowar Elves will block. All right, so I'm at the very least gonna kill that, so okay. that's good. 
So just get it out of here. Yeah. All right, and I'm going to play one of my favorite cards. That's one of the very first magic cards I ever got when I was a wee lad. Sarah Angel. She is a 4-4 with flying okay. and vigilance. I'm cautiously optimistic now that I have a Sarah Angel down. This is the perfect card to deal with this situation. I have a threat on the board. Okay. Ugh. But red has a lot of spells that deal damage. Or I might just shoot my Sarah Angel out of the sky. Green has a lot of spells that specifically destroy flyers. She's a flyer. Turn to you. Oh, oh I'm so scared, Sean. <laughs> oh, I have nothing but these 10 mana creatures. Oh, like, why can't I hold all this mana? So I'm going to plus one here, which makes it, it makes her a seven. Now see, now this this is the, the big threat, is that next turn, if you minus seven, it's 10 to me, 10 to this, 10 to this, 10 to this. So most creatures in magic maybe have at most five, six toughness. Well, Chandra's ultimate, just in case, deals 10 damage to every single creature and me. So it's kind of just the sweep everything into the graveyard card. And now I'm going to All right. use her mana and these three mana to summon Fire <laughs> Elemental. <laughs> it's a 5-4. So mostly okay, as long as I can attack Chandra, which I think I can. <laughs> I've decided to be overconfident. <laughs> okay. It's your turn. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play Niambi Faithful Healer. And now I'm going to look for Teferi. So don't mind me, oh. Oh, of course, it's the bottom card in the deck. Very good. Teferi's not the kind of card that really sweeps and cleans the game up immediately, but he doesn't really have anything left. May as well get my Planeswalker started too. Because this is a legendary, it also triggers Relic Runner's ability. Relic Runner can't be blocked if you've played a historic spell. This is legendary, so it's historic. So we're gonna go on to combat. I'm feeling great about this turn. Niambi means that the Relic Runner can't be blocked. Sarah Angel probably can't be blocked. May as well send the Juggernaut in towards Chandra because his hand is almost empty, but it's still not all the way empty. So I don't want anything that he still has to stop one of these and let Chandra live. I am going to attack with the Juggernaut because it has to attack. I'm gonna attack Chandra. I'm gonna attack with Relic Runner to Chandra as well. And I'm going to attack with the Sarah Angel to Chandra as well. Everyone's swinging in full force to Chandra. Sarah Angel has vigilance, so it doesn't tap. Everyone's gonna go in, right? Why take the risk? You always go all in. I'm going to block with my fire elemental. I would say any other blockers, but you can't do any other blockers. Mm -hmm. So before combat damage happens, I'm going to cast Gideon's Reproach on the fire elemental to deal four damage to it to kill it. Okay, well, I will play the gift of growth and I will tap. Ari got his first juicy interaction with the stack where because I cast Gideon's Reproach first and he responded with Gift of Growth, spells always resolve in opposite order that they were cast. So the last thing that happened means that that will grow and then it will be zapped for four. Sean played his Reproach, but I had the Gift of Growth ready. So I played it and we both died, but it's better than what could have happened. But also these two collectively deal six damage to Chandra who goes oh, to one. Get rid of that die. Get get it back in the pile right over here. I am angry about this. I am frustrated. I had you, this is, you know when you look at it and you think it's gonna go one way and then it change and then you turn and whatever. I'd like to come back to the start of the game. I will never be punished for keeping two land. I'll never be. I will always learn the wrong way. This feels fine. This feels so good. Let me look. Oh, I, well, I have no more mana, so okay. It is your turn, and do you have any more cards? I don't. All right, very well. To you, sir. So there comes a time in every Magic player's life where you go to a pre-release, and it's all the new cards. Oh. And your opponent draws a card, and your opponent does exactly what Ari did in that game. He looks and he begins to read. I don't want your card to have text. I don't want your card to have any ability to do anything right now, Ari. So, I will use Chandra's plus one. Uh, listen, I don't think you need to tell me who the target player is, so I'm just gonna go to 14. <laughs> um, I'll use one of hers. Great. And these to summon Grun, the oh. Lonely King. I have the game in the bag. This is how I win. Dude, I love this card. This card is so awesome in draft. If you play it normally, it's a 5-5 five, five for six mana. But if you attack alone with it, the power and toughness double. So already just having a 10-10 swinging in, 
That's pretty awesome. But you kicked it, so you get your fancy schmancy plus five, plus five. So now it is just a good old vanilla 1010. And if I attack alone, it'll be a 2020. Oh, that is the end of the turn. I, just, I love this card. Like, I, I want to draft around this card. I don't think that's good, but. I, I like how happy you are right now. There's no way I can kill Grun. I, I can't. So I'm going to send it back to the hand, maybe block with a small creature to just absorb the 20 damage, and I'm going to hope that that's enough time for my Sarah Angel to just chip away four damage at a time. I have made my decision. Okay, here's what we're doing. The Teferi that I drew from Niambi last turn, I'm playing Teferi. So I'm going to tap for six to do that. So Teferi has a minus three ability that's draw two cards and gain two life. That is really good. But Teferi's ultimate is minus nine. Take an extra turn after this one. I'm a man who would do well with two turns. That's fine. I'm fine with it. He's got a Teferi. It's cool. Now before I do anything with this, this is legendary. So this triggers Relic Runner's Can't Be Blocked ability. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to combat. Nyambi, not going to attack. Sarah Angel is going to attack you. Relic Runner is going to attack Chandra. That's the plan. So... Chandra dies, and you take four, because I don't think you have any way to block. You don't have any cards. No. Sounds good. I take her off. She's gone. Isn't that sad? Thank you, Chandra, for everything. Planeswalkers are baby cards for babies. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate my... Um, do I want to untap up to one target artifact or creature? I'm going to just plus two. It lets me untap things. That doesn't really help me that much, but it will add loyalty to Teferi to the point where I can just end the game straightforwardly with a multi-turn combo. All right, and I have no more mana, I have no more choices. But I'm satisfied, I'm content, I'm a happy bear. To you. Uh, <laughs> so in this moment, I'm going to attack you with 20 from Grun. Oh, you're not gonna attack Teferi? I'm not going to attack, what, what's better, attacking you or Teferi, you. I guess I am one Grun swing away from death, and uh, you know, I almost feel a little bad for Niambi because like she has this beautiful art, she's a legendary creature, but you know, she fetched me a Teferi, uh, so she's just chumping it, man. She's just going to eat the full might of Grun. Uh, yeah, sorry. I mean, she's dead. Mr. Grun lives. I live. Most importantly of all, Teferi's doing fine. And, uh, yeah. I'm going to pay the mana costs and cast the Carplusion Hound. Oh, wait, what, is it? what does it say? Whenever the Complusion Hound attacks, if you control a Chandra Planeswalker, ah. this creature deals two damage to any target. That's why you only ever go for Planeswalkers, because if there's synergy, you get to kill it. Yeah, okay. Mm. All right, Finn. All right. <laughs> it's your turn. Um, yeah, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm first going to attack you with the Sarah Angel for four. <sighs> the damn Sarah Angel. I'm now going to cast Temporal Machinations. I do not control an artifact, but I do not wish to be grunned to death. So I'm going to return this to the hand. Grun's back in my hand now, which is not favorable. I, I think I'm just going to go to nine. It's going to untap up to one target artifact or creature. I'm going for the two turnsies. So the end is in sight. Teferi's at nine. Ari's at ten health. So this means that... Sarah Angel can attack for four damage, bringing him to six. And then on the second turn that I get with Teferi, Sarah Angel deals another four, and the Relic Runner can get the historic trigger to make it unblockable to deal the final two damage to finally kill Ari. This looks like the end is in sight. Okay, it's your turn. It's your turn. Da, da, da. I have a feeling there is a Grun in my da, future. Da, da. So Sean thinks I'm going to play Grun, but I just drew something better, which is Fight with Fire. And I'm going to play that to yes. All right, here, Fight with Fire with a kicker. I think he's going to be surprised. I'm coming after you, coming after all of it. I'll hit you in your face. Wait, if this was kicked, it deals 10 damage, divided as you choose among any number of... What? Yeah. That's what they call me, the Great Divider. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just jumping in. Four to your angel. All right, she's dead. <laughs> One to your relic runner. All right, it's dead. Just wiped out all his creatures, man. It just leaves me with five. I'm giving that right to you, right to your face. To me, not to Teferi. Not to Teferi. All right, so I'm going to nine. Feeling fine, staying at nine. That's good for branding. And I will attack Teferi to make sure you don't get that next turn with my Carplosion Hound. 
We're probably dead. We've probably lost the game. We don't get another turn. We don't have a Sarah Angel. We don't have a Relic Runner. We don't have any creatures out. We are probably going to abandon doing plus two on Teferi ever. It's time to minus three our way into something more valuable. And also, I guess we get two life. Are you attacking with Marwyn, by the way? I, I will attack with Marwyn after. Right. Who's Marwyn swinging at? Uh, you. Okay. Just your face. Yep, so this three goes away. I take one, I go to eight. Oh, the turn's over, peasant. Mm. It's not big enough yet. All right, well, I will use Teferi's minus three ability because I don't care about him living anymore. All right, so I do that. Let's gain two life first to go to 10 because life is now exceedingly important. Draw a card, draw a card. Cool. I'm going to run out Teferi's Sentinel, which costs five which is gonna struggle with the invariable 2020. And then I'm gonna play Tetsuko Umezawa, Fugitive. So this is a 1-3, so this can't be blocked. And that's the only thing that I have right now. And I'm done. Grun's coming <laughs> back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And here comes Grun. Yeah. Hey. With a kicker. You what? didn't see that one coming. Is there any you? chance it got plus five, plus five? <laughs> so Grun's back out, and I think I got the game. Good night. All right, I'm untapping. I am drawing, and I am going to play at planes. All right, I'm in a position where I think I'm just Mr. Delay of game. Okay, I'm going to play another temporal. Machinations. Uh -huh. And it says, if you control an artifact, draw a card. Teferi Sentinel is a artifact. So that goes back to your hand. I get to draw a card. I'm also going to play two creatures. A Sparring Construct, which, which is just a 1-1, one, one, but when it dies, it gives a friendly creature plus one, plus one. And I'm also going to play the Aether, or Aether Glider. All my small creatures are now my last hope. These are the most vulnerable creatures. There is lots of red spells that can just sweep them off the board completely. I'm gonna attack with Tetsuko. Are you proud of yourself, man? I am! Suck on one damage! Suck on one damage, Ari! <laughs> All right, and then I'm going to use Teferi's plus two ability to untap target creature or artifact. So it gets plus two and goes to five. Done. It's your turn. I played Timber Gorge, which enters the battlefield tapped. Ha, 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 ha. You know what's coming. Grun's back. Baby. I have a suspicion. Here okay. he is. Now Ooh. I have no more temporal yeah. machinations. Okay. I'm. I think that's the end of it. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. We got a real match. We got a real match. I'm gonna minus three this. So Teferi goes to two. Gain two life and draw two cards. So I'm gonna go to twelve. Which technically doesn't matter if you're swinging for 20, but it's these two cards I want. One, two. Oh, cool. Okay, so I'm going to attack with these dudes. And you can't block with any of them due to my good old fugitive. And I am going to play Teferi Sentinel number two. Because one Sentinel is never enough. No, I'm... And then I'm done! <sighs> okay. All right. All right. Okay, so it's my turn. All right. And I'm going to attack you with 20 to your face, your dice, to... I know you're going to figure something out. And how lore-wise appropriate to have the Teferi Sentinels just blocking to keep me and Teferi alive. Wow. What resonance. And Teferi Sentinel is just the chump that I know him to be. So he's, he's dead. <laughs> Sweet beauty. This is not good. Make more we need more space. <laughs> Why can't uh, I hold on? Fire Elemental and... A pyromantic pilgrim. That's good. Okay. Yeah. Right. That's the end of my turn. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. I'm going to attack with all of these that you can't block. So you're going to one. We're sending you to one. And then I'm going to use the plus two to untap up to one target artifact that I control. And I'm going to get the sparring construct. And then I'm going to play. The Meandering River, which is tapped. And I'm going to play another one of my artifactual juggernauts. Oh my gosh. Whish. Whish. I'm done. So, I, you know, it's never easy, huh? No, wait, what's on the top? Wait. Here's the situation, okay. Next turn, I'm just going to swing in with some unblockable damage and kill you. So this one card needs to save you. This card, the one on the top. This card! You don't let me do it? <laughs> oh yeah, sorry. It's, sorry, turn to you. Turn to you. So I drew this card, and I think I got him. I'm gonna attack you with everything I got. Okay. 
Okay. We're swinging with the boys. Yes. Okay, so I kind of know Dominaria. I know some of the cards, but I don't know all of the cards. Okay, so- I got the perfect card. I'm ready. I'm gonna crush you right now. I'm trying to run through everything that I remember. What cards buff all creatures? Oh, there's that plus three, plus three gain trample. Because yeah, Grun is not attacking alone, but that's a 10-10. So it's time to do a whole bunch of small number arithmetic. So let's see, so that's five damage. That's three, that's three, that's one, that's no damage. Cause so that's not a 20-20, that's just a, it's just a, a mere 10-10. So I think first I'm gonna just cast Befuddle, the only card I have, to give minus four, minus zero to this, so I can draw a card. And, oh my gosh, that helps a lot. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is, Gideon's Approach was the card I amazingly drew. I'm going to deal four damage to this, so that's going to die. So now I have, this has one damage, this has three, this has one, this has, a lot. Yeah, listen, I can't, I'm a math major. I'm not good at arithmetic. I'm good with letters. I'm going to, I'm triple blocking here. I'm triple blocking like this. All right, what do you have? What, what's it gonna be? <laughs> it was a bluff. <laughs> the one true card. <laughs> yeah, I lied to you guys. I'm really sorry. Ari, I block. Yeah, so, okay, so that dies. All of these die. Um, I get plus one, plus one on a thing, which doesn't really matter, boom. I took one, two, three, four, five. So I'm gonna go to seven. All right. I can see uh, the writing on the wall. Ari, I can, yeah. Ari, look, Ari, I'm untapping. I'm drawing, it doesn't matter, I'm swinging in. One minus three is less than zero. He shot me in my tushy. <laughs> well, thanks for having me. Dude, thanks so much, it was a pleasure, man. <laughs> this was such a great game to play against Ari. Uh, it had enough back and forth and enough sort of grand scale to it that it just gave so much opportunity to just chat and banter with him the whole time. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Spell Slingers. And when you sit down to play either online or via your kitchen table, may you draw well. Cheers.